We all have used async await within Flutter application, but most of us haven't tried compute and isolates. And it's not your fault. In my opinion, Flutter team hasn't advocated enough the use cases and the samples. So in this video, we will understand the differences between isolates, compute and async await, and we'll also see when to choose one over the other. So let's get started. To save some initial time, I have created this empty Flutter project where we have added the GIF image of bouncing ball. It will help us to demonstrate the lagginess in the UI when we do a lot of work on the main thread. Now, basically what's happening, your main thread is responsible of running this animation. So every single frame, it's calculating the new value or new frame and rendering on the screen. So to start with our comparison, let's start with async await. Now, you can assume a scenario where you want to fetch some data from internet. You will create fetch data method and inside that you will write http.get. Now, to simulate this API call, we will use future.wait and I will wait for 3 seconds for this API to complete. Let's assume that. And also to make it a real example, we will create some dummy JSON data. We will encode it first and then decode it later and return as a final value. Now, if you call this method, you will see that the UI is not freezed. Interestingly, that's the question a lot of people have asked me. Can we write our HTTP calls within isolates? The point here is get method or post method is asynchronous. So whenever it hits to that point, your Dart program will automatically execute other code, which is our draw frame or any other Dart code you have in, in that duration. And once the API is executed, you have the response, it will come back and perform the next task, which is JSON parsing. So in the whole scenario, you will not notice any lag. Everything is working perfectly fine. So the conclusion is you don't need to implement isolate for API calls. Async await is totally fine for it. Now, you may say that this tutorial was supposed to be advocating isolates, right? Why you are telling me to use async await? Because that's the proper use case for HTTP calls. Now we can extend the same example and instead of having a simple JSON, we will complicate the JSON. So let's make it 10,000 JSON nodes and we will iterate it again thousands of time and then you will notice that once the api call is done your ui stutters so it's not all about a sync await keyword what really matters is your implementation if you have loops if you have long task like a single synchronous task running on a main thread that will cause your ui to lag now to fix this we can introduce isolates in our program which will be performing the action on a separate thread now there's a very easy way to create isolate you can use compute method and within that you provide the operation which you want to perform on a separate thread it will also ask you to provide the input parameter and then finally it will return you the data now with this simple one line change you will notice that your ui is not lagging anymore and that's the beauty of isolates but wait a moment isn't that isolates are spawned and we have to manage the send port, receive port, listen for updates, as you mentioned in your previous video. Yes, of course, you're right. To understand that, let's talk about the difference between compute and isolate. So in a simple word, compute is just a short version of isolate where it only supports primitive data types. So you can only send integer, boolean and all those uh, primitive data types and also it has one-way communication so you just talk to your thread only once and it cannot update you real time of the progress whereas in isolate you can have two-way communication and it can keep sending you updates over the time compute is built for short-lived tasks whereas isolates can be backgrounded and it's built for long-running tasks and you can implement isolate very easily by calling isolate.spawn and provide the name of method which you want to execute. Now, most important thing, this method should be out of any class. It should be a direct accessible Dart method. Now to communicate back and forth, you will need a receiver and sender. And isolate will keep sending you updates and based on that value, you can either update your UI, you can show some progress uh, or whatever you want to implement. 
So you can check out this video where I have discussed in detail how to pass parameter, how to listen for the data, how you can use custom objects within your isolate. If you found this video informative, make sure to give a thumbs up, subscribe the channel for more such content. I will see you guys in the next one.